Hello everyone, welcome to twitch.tv forward slash the onyx path. Uh, my name is Travis, my pronouns are he and they, and I am uh, but a lowly tech guru and player today. Uh, Tom will be running us through a lovely uh, story, the first story in our series of Mage the Awakening, Point of No Retreat. Now, um, before we dive into all of that though, and I hand things off to uh, the disembodied voice in the void, uh, to walk us through our story. There's a couple things I want to make sure to bring to everybody's attention. First and foremost, um, the world below is now available over on Backer Kit. We are uh, currently raising funding for it. Uh, last time I checked, we were like two thirds of the way to the goal. Uh, it's a brand new fantasy, uh, dark fantasy with horror elements, uh, sort of survival setting uh, using the Story Path Ultra rules. Uh, and if you head over to the backer kit right now, uh, you can back it. You can get access to, I think, the first three chapters of the book are up. Um, you can take a look at the some samples of the layout and stuff. It's a beautiful book. Uh, I had a really, really wonderful time working on it. And I would love it if you would uh, go pick that up and tell all your friends to do the same. Uh, also, I want to remind you that all month long we are uh, raising funds for... Um, for Make-A-Wish through the uh, Roll for Wishes fundraiser. Uh, we basically have been doing this on every stream. We've had a couple streams that are dedicated specifically to it. Uh, we have met and exceeded our goal, but I'd like to meet and exceed it more. So uh, if you've not yet done so, head over there and uh, support that. Speaking of uh, charitable things, we also have the Scarlands 5e uh, Bundle of Holding. Uh, right now you can get the basic bundle. I think it's about 30 bucks. comes with the core book, uh, the uh, Yugman's Guide to Gelspad, and a couple of source books. Uh, if you expand that out uh, with the larger bundle, uh, you can get basically, I think, everything we've published for 5e to this point, as well as a couple of third edition source books thrown in for good measure and flavor. Uh, so head over to there. Uh, Proceeds from that, a portion of the proceeds from that go to the Bodana Group, which is a charity that uh, we often partner with. Uh, they do amazing work with mental health in the tabletop role playing space. And then, um, lastly, uh, as we are playing Mage the Awakening today, uh, I want to do, do want to make sure everybody is aware that Tome of the Pentacle is now available uh, over at Drive Through RPG and POD and PDF. Um, head over and pick that up to expand your Mage the Awakening game. There's a ton of cool uh, information in that. Uh, timeline of the Pentacle Orders, uh, going prehistory to modern day, um, examination of uh, the modern orders worldwide, and you know story hooks that you can use in your game. Um, Full-fledged New York City setting for a Mage Chronicle. Lots of cool stuff. So head over and pick that up. And then there's one other thing that I... Oh, yes. Over at uh, Any Press Revolution... Uh, we have a bunch of our traditionally printed books, uh, many of them deluxe editions, for half off during half a ween. So if you head over to Indie Press Revolution and pick those up, there's a lot of great savings and a lot of great games. Uh, now that I have paid the bills, as they say in the entertainment industry, I will hand it off to our uh, glorious storyteller, Tom. Please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Hi and hello. A wonderful evening, uh, which is already pretty dark over here in good old Europe. Um, last time I, I said a wonderful evening, it was already uh, still bright daylight outside. And I'm very happy now that spooky season started. Uh, the the times and the sky are helping with the atmosphere at least over here um yeah i just wanted to add a, a few words about tome of the pentacle as well um i plucked one or two or three or four or five ideas from that book uh to inform the story of our game um and if if you have a look on into these pages, you you might find uh, the the things I am referring to. Um, so yeah, if if you want to to have a peek with us together, then don't hesitate and, and get this wonderful book. Um, yeah, that's that's one thing. 
uh, also, I can't stress enough how excited I am for the world below. <laughs> so if we can get a few stretch goals out of this uh, crowdfunding campaign, I'm very happy. <laughs> but uh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's a very, very awesome game. Very cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, but we are here to play my second mage game ever and my first mage the awakening second edition game um you should be familiar with this by now uh i usually make stuff up on the go and might get things wrong especially rules um this is okay yeah because we are probably having fun with this and uh yeah, I invite all of you to make up your own rules as you go. <laughs> At least on your gaming tables. Uh, just just don't crucify us for, for getting stuff wrong. Or taking a bit of time since magic includes a lot of math. Uh, we're using um, a foundry module that will help with calculating our spells but we will still need some time to put in the numbers and discussing what we want to achieve with our powerful magic spell. So uh, be patient for that. Um, what else I wanted to say? Uh, we do stuff as we like to. Um, I might come in conflict with established canon, which is also fine. This is a mage story, not the mage story. Okay, um, a few words about our campaign. We are aiming for a mid-long campaign, uh, maybe around about 10 sessions. We will look uh, what will happen until then, where we will end and what will be the finale of our story. And we will start as very ordinary people who had nothing special ever happen in their lives and who are completely unaware of the supernatural. Um, some of this is true, some is not. Um, I am joined by four wonderful players who are playing unawakened characters, and I'm very excited about the things that are going to down next session. Today we will we will put down the foundation of our game, get to know the people, and next episode we gonna get in there where all the strangeness is waiting for us. So enough talking from me, more talking from my players. And I am so happy that I'm not the only bodiless voice from the void tonight. So I'd love for Ipsy to introduce yourself and give us a very, very, very rough idea of who are you going to play tonight. I, <clears throat> I apologize for my appearance. Uh, I am currently suffering from I'm too beautiful disease. <laughs> and I don't want to afflict anyone with the fact that I am much too beautiful tonight um I, it drives men mad you know the much uh ripping and tearing of clothes and beating of chests and it's it's just a it's just a whole lot and i'm i don't need to inflict that on twitch tonight or any onyx path fans who may be watching in future on the youtube channel so my apologies i i will try to recover from i'm too beautiful disease uh, by next session. Tonight I will be playing Judith, uh, who is very, she's, if, if this was a different game, she might be considered lawful, but whether or not she would be good or evil is, is up to debate. Um, she's very about rules and very about following those rules and enforcing those rules and she works in corporate security and securing the information for the company and the 
the people who work at the company. Uh, so she's she's middle mid C level executive, we'll say. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You just uh, hinted at a very important detail about our game. Um, we are, or our players are all playing um, employees of the just magnificent Helix Inc., which is a very huge player in um, in all things cosmetics and lifestyle and they branded the slogan just become whole again and uh, all of our player characters um yeah are working for this company and uh, have different roles in there so um next one is ren please introduce yourself and who are you playing hi my name is ren um I will be playing Dr. Brian Gilberts, uh, a lot of emphasis on the doctor. Um, he is a middle-aged man who dedicated his entire life to the study of everything around numbers, math, the meaning of math, and why does everything revolve around math in the end? And since he had a bit of a hitch with theologists and others about the divine numbers and everything, he is laying a little bit low at aforementioned um, business to just check on the numbers and see what they're all doing wrong and working on his next doctorate and next theses and others and tries to stay low in his own little world of numbers and peace. Thank you very much. Josie, who are you and who are you playing? Hi, I'm Josie, uh, and I today will be playing uh, Eleonor, um, who in this uh, huge company is but a cog, but a very specific cog. In the down dark basement where the server room is and the physical archives are, I am a little basement dweller who just likes to be left alone get all the info, distribute it where needed, and no one needs to be here otherwise. This is my little cavern. Fuck off. Thank you very much. Last but not least, Travis, who are you going to play? Uh, I'll be playing Nancy Nighthawk. Nancy is a, a graphic artist who works in the advertising department, and uh, she's uh, a bit gothy probably a little standoffish uh to the uh co-worker folks at least the majority of them uh though she's built some friendships with uh, a couple of her co-workers thank you very much so helix inc they care very much about what their consumers put onto their faces and between the lips and onto the noses and what else they care very much about all the important things you have to care about especially your image and they um remember for five days a year that they do have employees they might have something to contribute to this whole thing. So once a year, Helix Inc. just goes haywall and makes the best of all company retreats. It's always a different location, but always something very special. Um, it is a great opportunity for people of all departments and layers of the company to just come together, celebrate, just kick it off and have a good time. There are some seminars, there's some team building, there's, there's always something that will remind you of the awesome and great family that you are a part of, and that is called Helix Inc. 
This time, they somehow rented a whole castle somewhere in the European mountains. The staff is not entirely sure where exactly this is, but the European mountains. And that it is for sure a castle. Uh, you have landed in a not too far off airport and have been transported there by buses. And as you have arrived, you were greeted by a breathtaking monument. Looking down from a mountain range into assembly of valleys, crowned with white snowy mountain tips above it, and a breathtaking view. My players will see a map of the area in, in our foundry, which is just there to, to give you an, an idea what locations we have and what places one could visit. It's not there to measure any distances or do anything complicated map related. Um, and there's a problem with the map that I will solve as soon as I've stopped talking. Um, <clears throat> I, I will clear that up. Um, after you've left the buses, which drove through, through two gates and a drawbridge, you entered the inner castle. Rough stoneworks, which stood here for over a century by this point. Those who are historically inclined notice immediately, well, of course it wasn't built in one step. There were addendums over the years again and again and again. It was expanded and further walls were added and further defense positions and more rooms for guests and workers and all the good things. There's one building which is reserved just for sleeping quarters where every one of you finds a one or two bed bedroom which you might share with somebody else or just have for your own. There's so much space here. And even though you've got the idea that most of the furniture was just recently added, it's quite comforting. And I would like for each of you to tell us uh, how far have you come with unpacking your luggage and what is probably the most important thing that you've placed in your room. Yes, I'll begin. Um, Dr. Gilbert will probably have already finished unpacking because they the only thing they carry with them is a very small suitcase that when opened just has three versions of the same suit and one silk pajamas and one other suitcase filled with writing utensils, measurements, calculators, and a lot, a lot of notebooks. And that's also the most important part. Most of the notebooks. Of course, one disappears immediately in his breast pocket together with one of his trusted pens. And then he sits down and starts looking at the architecture to see if he can see if one of the more golden rules of architecture is used to divide the mass and the structural integrity to know if it's safe to sleep there. Before we go into details, mm -hmm. we will give the others an option to describe their room. Much like a doc, much like the doctor, 
Judith has immediately unpacked everything in her very Spartan perfunctory room. She has uh, five different versions of the same little black dress. And for special occasions, she has a red dress that is exactly like the black dresses, but red. <laughs> yeah, ring. Yes. Uh, she has a tablet and her laptop that she uses to monitor communications and any security issues that she needs to be kept alert of. As a note, she is not physical security. She is more like information security and uh, keeping inform. She, she delegates physical security out, we'll say that. So she has no weapons or anything like that. Thank you. Um, Eleanor um, is probably not finished unpacking because, um, oh, look, there's something. Oh, they give notebooks here. Oh, look, there's a pen. Oh, oh, the view is nice. Um, ADHD overload because it's a new place. And, um, but the things that they brought, uh, that are very important is a first aid kit because they're incredibly clumsy and in old buildings like these uh, the stairs might be slippery or something else and um, just one of those really cute i fix it kits and along with that a beast of a laptop that has no business being portable and a few hard drives why would they need a few? Because they're all 15 terabytes? It, no, it doesn't make sense, but it's just a stack that's just neatly shoved into a corner, tried, a bit hidden behind some other things. And also just a heap of clothing that is like all black. It's it's hoodies and baggy t-shirts all thrown there. And I hope I brought more than two pairs of pants. Thank you. And I would think uh, Nancy probably has uh, clothes, makeup, uh, some jewelry, uh, probably in like a, a, a box to just to help keep it separated and, and uh, easy to access. She probably has uh, several candles and a sensor of some sort, like a small sensor of some sort set up and probably has her laptop um, on the desk ready to go uh, in case, you know, inspiration strikes and she needs to make some art. Ooh, very nice. So, I heard something about a certain doctor is staring at the waltz. And as soon as you do, th there's this um, pleasing uh, feeling because it just appears that every line just aligns perfectly. As if somebody went through the trouble you guess like 800 years ago, as this part of the castle was built, to just get it right. And if you stand in the center of your room, you feel truly centered. Everything points to you the walls and the ceiling and the way the pattern of the floor is laid out it re redirects the flow of of motion away again from you back to the walls up to the ceiling as i feel that i and notice it uh i will be at all like but not one for a great speech. I will still talk a little bit and dismiss how God has feel 
at the center of his own microcosm. <laughs> for once, everything fits right for now. But I enjoy in the feeling, like, try to sketch some of it and try to figure out exactly what orders they use, what formula they used, and also how brilliant he must have been for at that age to be able to do such accurate measurements. It must have been a very talented group of, of handymen. Of, it would probably yeah. be one leading, leading them. Probably. Probably, yes. Um, a short look at, to, uh, at your watch tells you that you, that all of you have like 15 minutes until the great opening ceremony, um, in, in the, the great assembly hall, uh, will take place. And, uh, what, what do you intend to do with this 15 minutes? Well, if it's 15 minutes, I'm already late. I have to get there right away. <laughs> With a similar sentiment, because being tardy is just unacceptable, even in this. This is still work-related, and I would not accept it of my students at my lectures to be fashionably late. So I also... With reluctance, remove myself from my room, lock everything up meticulously, and leave. Mm. And as you leave your room and walk down the corridor, you feel like the the stonework just just li lines up so nicely, and and centers your mind on the staircase like tin meters ahead of you um of course judith is already at lo at the location and it's a beautiful place high ceiling maybe five meters up and uh the ceiling is carried by very massive uh wood beams which are carved with so so nice and beautiful images um if there wasn't a, a giant stage at the center of one of the faraway walls they easily would catch the eyes of uh any visitor what what kind of carving what image is is catching your interest I don't really know at the moment. I'll just I'll probably just like look at all of them and just keep on looking at them, but always getting annoyed at the disturbance, the recent addition of the stage. Mm. That just like a beautiful formula, but just in the middle that some kids crawled in times zero and just up top. Just like it could have been this. But now it's reduced to nothing. I see. And my good mood sours almost instantly. And what draws uh, Judith um, interest and excitement in this place? People. Definitely the people. I'm looking at... I'm looking for anyone who looks suspicious or out of place. I'm paying attention to any of the serving staff. I should know everyone here who works for the company, but I should also be keeping an eye on the serving staff. You do know indeed some of the people here. Um, although, as you're right, most of the personnel in the room right now are foreigners. Uh, they um, are probably hired. They are setting up this the last pieces of the stage. They uh, actually are doing a sound check right now. And um, you notice that there is a small buffet being set up. So you have also waiters and stuff. 
and you notice just like your company it's a very multicultured very colorful assembly of people um all of them are pretty nicely um dressed and appear to know what they're doing very well they're they're friendly and polite if anybody has any questions and uh they're getting ready to uh hand out sparkling wine um there's somebody in between the cl- uh, the the gathering crowd who uh, matches your eyes for a second a person going by the name of Sadie Garber who is your oh. superior oh no uh, um, yes well she's supposed to be here isn't she it makes sense um, okay uh, no um, I will find reasons to not be in her vicinity and how do you feel about as your eyes lock for just the slightest moment? I'm fine. I'm fine. No, everything is fine. Everything is in order. Everything. Everyone here is supposed to be here. This is right now. Uh, oh, wine. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, more wine also. <laughs> um. She. Uh. She she looks at you and and your your as you, as your eyes uh, lock um, for a brief second hesitation and as she notices that you are evading she just lingers for a second longer to assure you of her reassurance that of course everything is just as it should be nothing is strange nothing is wrong everything is a-okay and nobody has to be ashamed of anything especially not her mm-hmm. yes no absolutely this is correct nobody's ashamed of anything everything is uh definitely as it's supposed to be we are all behaving in a professional business like manner at this professional business like event. Yes. Yeah. And as you are looking for opportunities to concentrate on something else, uh you notice um not too far away uh a man called Ray turner um ray is standing in a group of other people he is working in development and you know that uh that ray had some irregularities in his working schedules lately and you know that development is in the final stages of presenting a new product and you're not sure if uh, all communication that Ray did um, wasn't completely all right in in the last few weeks so he might be somebody that needs investigation in the close future so how do you feel about that? I will uh, certainly closely investigate him, but not too closely, but also shit. Okay, no, start over. Okay, so I will enter his approximate vicinity and keep an eye out for any inappropriate or suspicious behavior. Great. And I will certainly not let my supervisor know that there's anything wrong or suspicious or weird going on. No, everything is, this is my job and I am here to do my job. Are you feeling better with something to do? Yes, absolutely. Great. Um, how does Nancy feeling 
spending her time the last 15 minutes before the big event? I think she's probably, uh, you know, she's in a castle. So, right. So she's probably wandering around for the most aesthetically pleasing location with the best lighting, uh, to get a couple selfies for the Instagram. Um, maybe recording a TikTok to show off how awesome the surroundings are and then wandering into the, the meeting, probably close ish to on time, a mm-hmm. couple minutes early, but not, you know, not sweating it too, too hard. So, um, your discovery expedition brought you to the cannon battery, okay. which is, a a very broad space um on the walls uh where all or where whoop, yeah basically a battery of cannon uh is stored and from where you of course could uh shoot cannonballs deep into the valley so it is just a breathtaking uh selfie opportunity in front of some ancient weapons um what what is the most spectacular photo that you take uh, it's definitely like um, just sort of leaning with maybe a Zippo out near where the fuse would be on one of these cannons with just a big Cheshire cat grin. Um, I think would be a would be a good a good photo to take. Um, and then of course just uh, get a nice panoramic shot of the of this view. The view is beautiful. Um, you know, seeing the, uh, the beauty of nature with the sort of cold industrial warlike cannon barrels sort of, uh, framing the image, I think is, is, would be a cool shot too. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to get your best pictures, you have to do a little bit of acrobatics because there's a rather large parking lot in front of the outer wall and there are just so many cargo transporters over there yeah. it's like they equipped the whole castle completely anew so many transporters are standing there hmm. there are also the buses that carried you over here but just as you are noticing them, you, you also realize they they are leaving. Okay. Uh, so the cargo transporters are staying, but the buses are taking off? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's not terribly out of the ordinary or beyond the expected, right? I mean, we plan on being oh. here for a few days. So Yeah. Uh, I make a you know mental note of it and... Do my best to shoot around it, and then I head back into the to the uh, meeting. And you're just on time. How are things with Ellie? Um, Ellie is trying to first and foremost find out um, if there is any uh, internet or other connection here, because if there is not, that might that tiny panic, just tiny panic. Okay. How much does your panic increase over the coming next five minutes? There is no internet connection. Um, that's never a good sign. Although we are in the mountains, that is normal. That is okay. Is there any cell phone connection, like just regular old landlines or any of that? You have a spotty reception. Okay. You find some places where it's kind of working mm-hmm. and many places where it's just no connection at all. Okay, but there is spotty and not none, which means that there, except for the castle, are some signs of civilization in the near 10 kilometers. Good, good. Keep breathing. Everything will be fine. It's 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 just a company retreat. You skipped it the last time. You, you, you got out of it last time, but this time, no. You're going to be gonna be a big boy it's all gonna be okay um for the rest um just probably 
grab my two kits I have that I always want to have on me and my phone, just your standards, regular, I need to socialize with people and something might happen because something always happens and put those on my belt and in my pockets and then check the time when we have to be there. Do you think you are on time? Barely. I'll probably have to do a little jog. Barely. Yeah. But you you finally manage it. So the the hall is crowded with people. There are many opportunities to sit and uh, to sit, and there are also some groups of people standing in the back rows and having a nice talk. Everybody is supplied with nice tiny pieces uh, of, of food. I don't know what the English words are for this. Uh, might be canapes, unless it's just a piece of furniture. Um, tiny. Tiny appetizers. That's a good word. And you, you're getting sparkly wine or orange juice or a mixture of both. And finally, finally, from two very large um, uh, loudspeaker towers, music blares, there's a big fanfare, there's a kind of pop rock themed song announcing that things are gonna happening now and everybody can get more excited and um yeah there is there's um uh, there's somebody uh appearing on the stage a nice nice couple of energetic power people who are from um higher middle management And they bring so much energy and so much joy with them. They're they're smiling over their faces. They they are kind of in corporate clothes, but um, a little bit, a little bit already in Friday afternoon mood. And so they're they're jumping onto the stage and they say hi, greetings, Felix. And there there is kind of a response and and they're doing a whole icebreaker situation warming up the people and um finally they get to uh yeah the welcoming speech hey it's so great to see to see all of you together um we just heard that the number reports are coming in and we can tell you it's looking pretty good Once again, once again, a big win. We made another awesome cut in the market and we we could expand more this time, Eastern Europe. We are so proud of us. We're so proud of you. This is a huge win for the whole company. Thanks to you. A raising applause, a tide of hand clapping for all of you. And there it's it's very hard at some point to, to not just give in and uh most of the people are are clapping and so they continue yeah so what can you expect well like all of our amazing retreats in the last years we set up an awesome program like you will have even a program every night on this stage until 1 a.m. in the morning, there will be live music, there will be stand-up, there will be all kinds of fun things over here. Uh, in the middle of this whole five days shebang, there will be a giant quiz, and uh, we uh, have some awesome prizes for you to win. For it's a it's a group quiz for up to five t people a team, and you you will win big. You will win big. Uh, of course, we, we will keep it a little bit secret, but we will release the information about the prices in the coming hours. What else is there? Well, we set up a whole area just for games. Um, we have 
all the craziest new board games and we have some good old classics um i heard that not only the guys from it because it is getting mainstream we are very happy to say this um there will be uh incredible opportunities to uh play the newest amazing RPG, which is called The World Below. Can you imagine this? We we receive pre-release copies of this game, and you can you can get in on the action right now. Um, what else is there? Well, of course, we have a fully stocked bar. All drinks are inclusive for these five days. Just remember. You might forget what's happening on retreat. Your photos and cameras probably don't. So don't do anything stupid. Yeah, we, we warned you about this stuff. Um, okay, what else? Uh, there will be uh, there will be uh, three meals a day. Uh, we have uh, the cantina area. We have an amazing team of cooks freshly imported from France. They will do incredible stuff and there is also a rumor of every day is pizza day so don't worry even if you're not into fancy cuisine there's something for everyone's liking and last but not least i i can tell you this nobody has found it yet but but we do have the world largest escape room somewhere within these walls. If you find it, it's all yours to explore. And we hit some pretty amazing stuff in there. Anything that isn't part of a riddle, but marked as a price you can take home with you. So, if you find it and solve the escape room, you're in for one of the best and amazing experiences of your life. So, that's enough kafafa from us. Just remember, we at Helix Inc., we are a large company, we are a large family. We have all kinds of people here and we want that everyone has fun. So please be kind, be respectful, and follow corporate um, policy. Have a nice evening, and I hope to talk with you soon. Um, and with this, uh, the the team leaves the stage and there's actually a band setting up instruments and stuff and there will be there will be more program going on and what would your plans be we have early afternoon you have a long day and evening and night ahead of you what are you the most excited about? I don't know, that escape room sounds like a lot of fun. Maybe looking around for the mystery could be exciting. Mm -hmm. The most important part will probably already going back to bed but because this is all such a terribly terribly busy and overstimulating thing but that the rpg sounds nice often i, I have played some pathfinder in my times like the math in there is ex exquisite so i might check that out and Something in, in the back of my head is like the lines in this building lead somewhere. It always 
tells me where to go and with a, with a little voice in the back of my head that I'm trying to ignore because it always left me some horrible moments, but geometry existed before creation. It is co-eternal with the mind of God. So, so no matter whether it's the great geometry, I might actually subconsciously start looking of, of, for it, but maybe for now, intermingle a bit. I don't want to piss off the executives too much. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Um, Ellie is probably going from the moment that the band started playing and everything started exploding, uh, just retreat to a corner with the, the as much sound padding as possible and put their hood over their head and kept their ears shut because that is loud. That is really loud. I don't like loud things. So the first thing that they're going to do is going to go back to their room and get the headphones and come back before deciding whatever else to do because apparently everything here is incredibly loud. It um, is. And then is going to look around to buffet if that is already a thing that you can uh, take snacks from to see how many of those you can stuff in your pockets. <laughs> I want snacks for later. Great. Um, just as you, you venture out to uh, get your headphones, you just notice that there are signs directing also into uh, to a, towards a museum. So just you, you know this, oh. that this space exists. Hmm. Hmm. Noted. After I get my snacks. Yeah. And what what is Judith most excited about? Observing people. She will she will be sort of drifting from group to group, engaging in light small talk, figuring out what everyone else wants to do and see if she can notice any patterns in that and if there's anyone really interested in doing one thing over the other a lot of people wanted to do the brand new rpg for the world below that's being funded via backer kit and we can check it out uh, through some links that are available in chat you know uh, if people want to do that she's interested in finding that out she's interested in finding out uh, about this escape room. Um, she wants to know more about the food. She's basically just trying to gather intel on what other people are doing and try and make a plan of action from that. And she is very specifically not doing anything that involves her supervisor. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got to hydrate. We, we got to hydrate. Uh, okay. Hydrating, much hydrating. Thank mm. you for the hydrate. Mm, it was delicious mm -hmm. iced coffee. I'm oh, sorry, water. you can't you can't see it because it is also too beautiful, but it's <laughs> it's delicious, cold and refreshing. It's catching. Oh. Yeah. 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 So as as you're slurping your iced coffee uh and you're observing the crowd, we're gonna do our very first dice roll tonight with you. Um, if you want to, you can open your character sheet in the forge or you can use your dice, your real world actual dice or some other means of dice rolling. And I need you to roll... Um, I think you're very methodically working, right? Oh, correct. Absolutely. Then I think it's intelligence and investigation. I have to figure this out. Mm. Hold on. If you're, are you in, in Foundry? I am in Foundry, yes. And in your character sheet, then you just have to click on investigation. 
I and, don't I don't know how to get to my character sheet. Okay. There are on the top right corner several uh icons and one of them is just a lone person and it's called actors. Actors? Okay, yeah, I'm there. And then you should see uh the characters. Oh, yes, all right. And it's what did you say? Investigation? Investigation and wits, then both of them should uh, shine in a wonderful blue light. Uh -huh. And then you can uh, roll by clicking uh, the dice symbol on the top of your character sheet. Yes. And then you can just, we don't have any other modifiers, just hit execute. I like that. I like executing. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. Uh. But the dice are not in your favor. So. Uh, I, I um, cannot parse that string. Uh, if, you, if you click on it, it uh -huh. will expand and show you the results of your dice. Ah, okay. And there the we go. zero below is just the total number of successes. successes. I'm, I'm with you. Certainly no. So Thank you. I appreciate your help. You're very, very welcome. Helpful, helpful to use this tool. Thank you. I, I love it. It's it's awesome. <laughs> um, okay. You, you take quite a lot of time. Like you really sink in, and you're spending at least an hour just looking at people making mental lists and going on and on and on. And so it it just is like an eternity later that you notice, well, there are many people, but a certain group of people is actually missing. Uh, and that's most heads of department. Well, is my supervisor also missing? Uh, as as you are starting to look at, uh, for her actively, yes, <gasps> she is also missing. Gasp! Yeah. They probably have a secret meeting. Maybe they found an escape room. <gasps> maybe, maybe, they... maybe they got together to play the world below funding now on backer kit. <laughs> Probably. Um, might be yes. Um, I, well, I guess I I wouldn't know where they went. I just because I didn't no. think that until that investigation role. But um, one thing I forgot to mention, which I really wanted to mention, is um that um. Cheryl Theodoru, which was the speaker on the stage, mentioned that there's a certain restricted area which you aren't allowed because it is still under reconstruction and not safe for entry. That is the large red marked area on our map. And it is, for the convenience of our listeners, um, not... Uh, it it is um, on the on the uh, on the south of the area, stretch out, very late edition, um, uh, and it it has some some places which might become a nice restaurant later on or an own hotel. Um, it is built mainly for defensive purposes. But this is off the limits for you. And uh, also the keep of uh, the um, of the whole castle is reserved for management. These two areas are not to be entered by the ordinary people. Okay. Um. And then your attention returns to Ray. Ray Turner. 
I'm on to you, Ray Turner. And you notice uh, he he's starting to relax a little, but there's somebody else next to him. They're a, a trio of people. And the third person, not partaking in the dialogue between Ray and uh, the other person, they're... They're looking very exhausted, like barely standing. Like every single one of them look barely standing? No, this one person. Just this one person, okay. This one person. The other two seem to ignore this, and it's... Oh. How... Uh, do I know this person? Uh, yeah. It is Sophie Bugard from IT. Oh, okay. Hmm. Do I know anything about Sophie that would lead me to in, to believe that she uh, might be might not be feeling well? Mm. Like, she is she is holding a glass of orange juice okay and as you focus on her you notice that whilst she's only standing there apparently listening to the discussion in front of her it it slips for a second from her grip and she just barely manages to catch it again Hmm. I will stay uh, in the vicinity. Does it uh, does it appear to be ordinary orange juice? It's not like a screwdriver or anything like that. Hard to tell. Yeah, I know it's hard to tell. <laughs> but uh, well. Let me rephrase that. Does she appear to be drunk? No. No. She does. She's just to... exhausted. Very much. Like three days no sleep, only working. Okay. And everyone else is ignoring that. Um Ellie works in IT, doesn't she? No, she works in the archive. But she knows something about IT. That it, that could to some be considered part of IT. I don't know if it is by company part of IT, but I do work with like um, digital archiving as well. So yes and no. Yes and no. Hmm. But Nancy works in IT. One of one of you works in IT. Nancy works in advertising. Advertising. <laughs> Yeah, so and nobody I, works in IT. Oh I, my gosh. I also work with IT. Okay. But morally to check their mistakes. Then I will try and reach out to the good doctor, see if I know where he is. He's a reliable sort of person. He truly is. Probably hmm. not that difficult to find. I will mostly be away from crowds, drinking sparkling water if I'm adventurous. Okay. But, but mostly just still checking all of the architecture and things that tend to interest me. Staying away from the people that tend to go drinking and other things. Okay. I'm going to dispense with small talk. Just uh, he doesn't seem to be the small talk sort of person. Have you noticed anything unusual about Sophie lately? Lately, as in tonight or in longer times? Well, she looks like she hasn't been sleeping. Oh, time to hydrate. Thank you.
keep the hydrating for later. The glass is empty. But um, am I allowed to maybe roll a perception or something? <laughs> um, of that to see if I did notice something else, because uh, as a professor, I do have a tendency to make sure that the people I work with are up to par. You don't have to roll. Okay. You know that um, there was a bit of a stretch in the last few days. There were some projects that were meant to be done before retreat mm -hmm. because it's usually better to start something new after retreat than continue working on something you started before retreat. It's just people are in another headspace then. Also, it can be added to the numbers. Better for the PowerPoint. Yeah, and you uh, you actually had an audit uh, yesterday with the IT mm -hmm. team. And they all seemed fine. A little bit cranky, maybe. They, they had to do one or two additional hours. But in the end, they, they were happy with the results. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there, there was reason to be mm -hmm. proud of themselves. And they were all very much looking forward to this occasion. So then I will turn to uh, Mrs. Lee. And to be honest, like the last days were a bit pushing the envelope, a lot mm -hmm. of businesses, lots of little projects to be finished. They were looking quite okay by the end. I have seen them. Um, mm -hmm in the last three days, but you cannot forget, like most of the people in our line of work, where we work, have not been on airplanes yet. They haven't traveled this far. Jet lag might be a very big influence in this. Hmm. But of course, that is just speculation. I would say maybe ask them or uh, just check up tomorrow. Like, nothing to worry about. I don't think, from what I know from them, that they will offer, I think, in your line of work. Like, are you working today, or are you just also here on pleasure? She seems very confused by the question. You know, your line of work, your security, make sure everything's safe, but are you here as an employed person to work or are you here because it was mandated that every employee came here to watch this spectacle yes I, I'm always at work there's, there's no okay. security is, is an ever vigilant job okay you're undercover as they would say also I, I know exactly what you mean Sure. Work does not end when the clock runs out. But if I would see anything in particular, I will page you about those things. Also, it is nice seeing you again. Oh, yes. Also, I'm... nice seeing someone who hasn't devoured the free bar in the five seconds they could. Also, have you noticed, like, the, the the architecture of this building it is a work a work of marvel. It's it's a castle. It's a real castle. Uh not like medieval times in America, which they ride the horses inside the building, which seems very strange to me. But no, yes, uh, it's, and she's gonna very like gently reach over and pat the wall it it's a very pretty building like like she's petting a nervous dog or something <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry i was being swept no um, it's uh, yeah, no, no fine it's it's good i will let you know if i notice any other discrepancies in the person of interest or others for that matter 
Like, don't worry, I will not be drinking anytime soon. And I would advise you not to either. You're already at edge enough, it seems. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. You've always been a trustworthy and reliable source. Okay. That's what science is all about, is it not? But well, I would advise you to, in your own way, enjoy the rest of the evening. You know where to find me. Also, um, if it's necessary, um, one second. Uh, oh, great storyteller. Uh, do the rooms have numbers? They do. Then I give my room number and make for personal entertainment of my character. What is my room number? Do you have uh, any subjections to number seven? I do not. Perfect, then it's number seven. In the meantime, uh, Nancy is orientating herself and somebody from her department uh, just strolls into her direction and um, yeah, sees you and addresses you. This is Theodora. Um, she is a fresh member of your team. And she says, hi, Nancy. Nice to meet you. How are you doing today? Hi, uh, Tia, right? Y yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Uh, how are you? Excited. This is my first retreat. I heard so much about them. Um, yeah, they're a great time. Woo! But, hey, at least they picked somewhere cool to have it this year, right? Yeah. I I heard you, you went to an island last year. Yeah, um, yeah, they like to uh, throw really, really, really expensive retreats as opposed to, I don't know, giving us raises. But, you know, uh, it is what it is. Um, it's I've, I've had uh, worse perks at jobs, I guess. Yeah. My last job was, was trash, so I'm I'm very happy that, that I ended up with you and I got this amazing opportunity. Although... I, I haven't met her too many times, but is Jane always like this? Yes. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get a different experience at any point uh, in your interactions, uh, for better or worse. I I tried to run by some, some examples by her, and she just shredded them. Almost literally. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you you learn to take everything uh, with a pound of salt, I think. Um, you know, it's at the end of the day, we're, um, you know, assembly line creatives, right? We have to we have to match the parts the boss wants. Yeah, that's that's probably right. Other I I kind of. I kind of thought your ideas from the last meeting weren't too bad. Like, oh, thanks. Uh, I've, I've, I think I've learned uh, how to filter as much what I think is cool through the uh, lens of what I know the boss wants. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh. She points towards the buffet. Do you look over? Do you know uh by any chance Ellie? Ellie. Yeah. Yeah, I know Ellie. What is oh. oh she's just in for the biggest amazing surprise. Um would you would you like Come with me. We haven't met in some time. We 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 know each other. Oh sure, yeah, absolutely. Great. And um, you you venture over to the buffet. 
and uh Ellie, you you have this feeling that eyes are directed at your neck and people are steering towards you. Um I glance over my shoulder and I might have even heard a very, very familiar voice with a very, very familiar accent, very akin to that of mine. Mm -hmm. And I sigh audibly with my entire body. What is the easiest way to tell Ali and Theodora apart for Nancy? Um, Ellie is completely clothed in black and very baggy. Um, and Theodora is probably dressed in what some would consider very modest feminine trad wife clothing. It's a, a lot of difference in style. And also, uh, Ellie wears glasses where Theodora doesn't, but the face structure in these can be probably traced back to the same line. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Uh, say hey, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Hi. Look at you. You're looking great. What are you doing here? I, I am on company retreat. You got hired in this company? Yes, I'm Wait, working at advertisement. Yeah, with she's, Nancy. she's in my department. You two know each Wait, other? What's, with yeah. what skill set? Well, I learned some uh, graphical design and uh, I, I ended up here with an internship. And apparently my skills were good enough to keep me around. So... How did I not see? Well, see, the thing is, your department and mine don't need to be in contact with, it, with each other very much. So I would really like it if you just left me alone. <laughs> Thank you. S sorry. Um, sorry, Nancy, this is. Oh, hey, personal. no, no, no problem. Uh, sorry for uh, all of the awkward that's happening right now. I'm going to uh, go over here and grab a sandwich and. Nancy just kind of walks off and uh, grabs something from uh, hastily from the buffet and uh, walks over to a, an empty sitting space, kind of uh, almost storms over to an empty sitting space. How many things are you going to change in your life in order to just pull me back? I already said I'm not going back. You know, I firmly believe that you deserve any chance that you can get. And I will do a lot of things to give you these chances. I don't want your chances. I already had that, what you're alluding to, and I left it for a good reason. And I don't need you to keep chasing behind me like a little beaten puppy, trying to drag anyone into this just to make this as socially pressuring as possible. I'm not going back. I, I really like for you to not paint me like this but I can understand that this might be seeming very forward to you um it's just I miss you mom and dad miss you and It's. I can't believe that you don't miss us as well.
whether I would be missing you all or not, I'm not going back. That doesn't change my decision. I left with everything I had. The moment I could and was allowed to legally. You think that I didn't think about that for years to begin with? And that suddenly because I see you for the utmost time again trying to pull me into something that I fled from? Okay, I see this is a lot, you need time. Just now, I'm around and families stick together, you know? Like gum to the bottom of my shoe, I am aware. More like cement holding a wall together. You can have that opinion. I do have. Um, I I will leave you alone. It's all right. Just you don't have to be ashamed if if you notice that. The sand you're building your life upon is eroding. They, I won't judge. I hope you are doing just that right now. Just like you always did and just like you always will. Because it is just in the DNA of how you were brought up. She sighs. And how that there's not a there's no disappointment in the side, there is no um defeat in the side, it's just a expression that she believes that you need time and will come around again as she leaves. What emotions that, that does this leave you with? Panic. It's always panic. Every time she finds me, it's panic. I cannot shake her off. It's impossible. How does she always get on my trail? I don't know. Is it fairly clear for where Nancy's sitting to see... Uh... That Ellie is uh, distressed. I am gripping the tablecloth of the banquet so hard that I'm pulling a few appetizers towards me and accidentally. That's fair. I'm gonna walk over and be like, "I'm I'm really sorry. I had no idea that there was oh that kind of history with with you." Oh no, it's fine. It's just <clears throat> um. If you hadn't noticed, because we're apparently we are awfully similar in face structure, um, that is my sister. Oh, and I take it uh, not a happy family reunion. Hmm. For her, maybe. I left that place for a reason, but she keeps coming back, and she keeps trying to drag me back. And wait, you think she? Got the job here, like, to stalk you? It is not unlikely. I'm not ruling anything out. Oh, that's messed up. But my family was no. bad. Oh, no. Um, 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 what can I say? Southern European, Southern European Christianism can be a cult at some times. Um, I escaped the clutches of that as soon as I could, but just one little nail in my back keeps trying to drag me back because we're a family and we have values and we should just settle down. It'll all be fine. Gotcha. Yeah, that sounds uh, horrible. 
So uh, my condolences. I can try my best to run an interference for the rest of the weekend if you want me to. Oh, it's fine. Just don't be surprised if at the end, if she gets in my face too much, I might explode just a bit. Right on. Well, here's hoping that doesn't happen. Well, it won't be physical, but you wouldn't want to know what comes out of my mouth when I'm pressured. That's fair. Well, listen, uh, I feel bad for, uh, you know, being involved in, in, in No, some drama. Uh, let's, no, you could have known. You let's could go have known. figure something out to kill some time, right? We got, we got a while, don't we? Yeah, we do. Um, um, it was something about tabletop games and an escape room and other things. The escape room sounds dope, not going to lie. It does, if you can escape. Well, we got to find it before escape is a problem, don't we? True. That we could just take a look around, I guess. Yeah. What's the harm? Um, if Nancy starts walking, I follow. Yeah, I think I'll just start uh, walking. I, I, I would like to try to track down any clues as to where this hidden escape room might be. Um, let's do our second roll this night. Wits and composure, please. Ooh, that's fancy. If, if you're just on the lookout and not uh, starting methodically working your way through the place and... Yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think Nancy's that uh, investigation-minded. Let's see. Did that go through? It, uh, it did go through, yes. It's a four, two oh, sixes, yeah. and a one. Awesome. So, uh, no successes. No successes. Is, is that a botch, or is that uh, no, zero you, successes? You only botch if you're reduced down to a chance die. Yes. So, it's just not a success, which means... You start wandering and wandering through the castle. And you come by some very nice places. You you take the tour around the wall walk and um then you end up close to the western exterior wall. And there are actually some mining tunnels going, going down. They used to be barred, but apparently the lock has been been removed oh so it's like the the gate looks like does it look like it was removed deliberately does it look like it was removed um i mean i guess does it look like it was like broken off or does it look like somebody just took the took off with the padlock or something like that the second yeah um yeah oh this looks promising and i Creek, open the door, and I'm going to go check that area out. Sure. And you venture into the tunnel. Um, there is a very, very tiny stream driplet of water running downhill following the winding tunnel. Soon you can hear your steps with faint echo coming back from the stone walls around you. Um, uh, hmm? Sorry, uh, please go on. It's moist in here. 
I don't like moist. Ugh. Just like put on like the sweater paws and everything. <laughs> hey, if you want to turn back, we can. Absolutely. It's up to you. No, no, it's fine. It's just. This reminds me of a sewer. I mean, it is a little sewer. -y. Have you ever uh, explored any like catacombs, though? Like, you ever been to like a ossuary or any any stuff like that? Not all, not out of my own free will, no. <laughs> well, like I said, if you don't want to, if you don't want to press on, we can absolutely turn around. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Just, oh. Um. And then it is Nancy who tips off a tiny stone which flicks down the tunnel in front of you. And it as it um, gets away from you, the sound of the clicking stone of the pebble it sounds a little bit like laughter well that's spooky and we cut towards um to to uh, to judy and uh the good doctor brian gilberts So, what are you two up to? We're standing around awkwardly, not talking to each other. Yes. <clears throat> After a, a few moments of um, absolutely having no touching points of conversation and seeing them a bit very uncomfortable, which makes me very uncomfortable, um, I do actually what I intend to do from the first place. These walls are trying to tell me something with their, like, not say the walls, but the one who built these walls. And he must have been an, a, a great, great artist. So I, this sometimes happens, I crawl into the back of my head and just start seeing the patterns and listening to them and as they did earlier, they lead to places. And if the escape room is also built on those rules, maybe listening to the math in the walls will lead me there. So I just actually want to observe and actually start following because this party is getting way too rowdy for my liking and some walking and thinking might actually do me some good. And you follow the, um, the sound of the crowd fades out around you. The sacred world of geograph uh, geometry is a silent one. Although it is filled with light, you follow the patterns. Once again, they lead towards a door. They lead towards a corridor. The corridor leads you towards a spiral staircase bringing you up several floors you enter the um attic of one of the buildings here it is the wood structure that is pointing you directions. You follow it. From there, it is another staircase downstairs. 
the walls, wall stairs, the central courtyard, and then most castles have a chapel or a church. This one has a very tiny one. And the way it is built, it, it is reminiscent of Eastern European churches with the dome in the middle and um, I need to look up the word. And uh, of a square uh, foundation. Each wall has an identical niche in the middle. The wall you went through has the gate or the door in there. The others uh, at least present door-like arches. What waits you in the middle of, um, of this chapel? So just like a regular um, medieval chapel, but with extreme good uh, architecture, right? Yes, and you are led here by mm -hmm. the architecture and the whole layout of the entire mm -hmm. castle. This is a focal point. Are there candles? Please again? Are there candles? In the chapel, sure to burn, um, like like the, the, those sacrificial candles. Um, um, I remember my room sign seven, also known that seven 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 is the number of luck. And for what for I already seen like my bad habit of seeing numbers and the divine. And all around it start coming back. It's it's been a heavy day, so I take a little gamble and I burn seven candles, and then I after those are done, another spot burn nine for new beginnings. Hmm. And actually try to like really really observe my surroundings to see if someone hidden maybe less obvious leads me to a newer place that is hidden within the hidden like to find that escape room the way the light of the candles reflects on the wall it's just, it's just right. It just highlights the right uh, crevices. It just accentures the right stones. And as you, as you light the last candle, there is there's a brilliance just everywhere in this room. <clears throat> now we back to our nonsense, Gilberts. Chicken skin, cheese. Huh? So, 
what exactly can I see? Or did, did I hear something? Do you hear something? Oh. There's a voice cutting into this divine moment. Like from everywhere or from a certain... No, from the door. Oh. Definitely from the door. I I turn around, a little snapped out of my comfort. And what do I see? Or who? You see... Professor Dr. Ludo Capelli. He is another of the uh, freelancers who are frequented by Helix Inc. from time to time. Uh, and even though if you make it a point to never meet him on the premise, he is nigh avoidable because whatever you publish is going to be criticized within the minute by him. To be fair, you're doing the same to his works. One is criticizing, the other is pointing out obvious flaws. Um, I, I just turn back and turn like, I hope you also follow the lines in the wall, which makes a certain point instead of just following me around like a seagull following around French fries. From what you can see this, that he is primarily um, focusing on you, not completely aware of the enchanted place. So you're just here to once again give your unfounded opinion or do you have any business? Because I'm trying to enjoy myself this evening as are we all instructed to do? Well, I, I just came across your latest paper two days ago and I thought it would be nice to discuss it in person. And so I looked for you and found you here, apparently. Dr. Capelli, as is usual, if you want to discuss certain papers, there is a time and a place, as you know. And then you should just talk to my secretary. We will make an appointment and we will. For one, I do not have my papers with me. Two, we would have a discussion, a reasonable one, not just throw feelings around like the uncivilized. And I'm actually busy with something. So you either join me and try to be open-minded and be useful, or please do whatever you wish and do not disturb me. Tonight has been overstimulating enough. What are you even doing here? Once again, defacing God. Since when is giving sacrifices and burning candles to God, defacing God? You absolute buffoon. Are you even a doctor in theology or are you a doctor in sciences? Well, as you should know, by my very well established Vita, that I am a doctor honoris causa by the power of the Vatican, my dear friend. And I am more than surprised to see you uh, a devoted follower of natural science putting up candles. You never understood, did you? I do believe in God, not just as the more simple in believers think of God. God is more than just 
a little bearded old man in the sky that tells you what to do and will arrange everything for you. All of that quack is filled with inconsistencies and just bogus. But and yes, I do believe in the great creator, the great architect. Just not in a way that you... I'm sorry for my root terms, but feeble-minded people think. Because once you start believing and trusting, it is it's irresponsible. It's faith. Faith. Scientists and faith do not belong together. And here you are, burning what one might easily misunderstand as sacrificial material. Yes, and do you think I do it out of faith? <laughs> I, am, I am very ready to hear the scientific explanation. <laughs> well, once again, like, for God's sake, um, this entire building is built with lines, rules, and structure, which led me to this point. With this point, I also try to give my sacrifice as such by giving the divine numbers. You do know the divine numbers, do you? Or are you just one of those, I read the Bible once, so now I'm a great man of God. You know, it is true what they say. There's so much getting lost in writing. I, I am so intrigued. I really must see with my own eyes what's going to happen. So I, I will, for the sake of the experiment, just stay here, quietly observing whatever you're doing and I'm very eager to learn something about you tonight. Find something scientific out of you. It might have, it could be saved after all. Thank you. Now, please, silence. And I continue, like, seeing where the, the light guides me and, like, continue experimenting with the structures and others. Wonderful. Judy. Present and accounted for. Wonderful. Um, what are you, are you going to do? Are you uh, looking after Sophie? Are you having an eye on Ray? Do you something on your own? Do you do something on your own? I'm going to try and go between Sophie and Ray and see which one is more, which one raises the sus meter more. The sus meter is raised definitely by Sophie. Um, she just sticks to this group and she She never says anything. You notice that she is holding her glass without drinking from it, whilst the others are already into their second beer. Um, she, she just hangs around. Um, if they move, she follows slowly. If they um, go for food, she follows. They put stuff onto their um, plates. She doesn't. She just follows back to the table. I will follow even more slowlier. 
drink even less beer and eat even less food. <laughs> no, I, I will keep an eye on her uh, yeah. because this is clearly something is out of place here. In, in a somebody is not following the rules is what's going on here. Um, and sorry. somebody could be in danger because of that. This is a, a, a risk that needs to be accounted for. And you you follow this group for quite a while. Mm-hmm. It is 7.30 p.m. on the 2nd. As Sophie just put her, puts down her still undrunken glass of orange juice. Without a word, separates from the group and steers directly out of the hall. Hmm. And I assume everyone else is out of sight. Uh, my compatriots are not in the area anymore. They're all doing their own thing. Yes. Okay, go ahead and follow as, as, as closely as I can. See if I can pick up their trail. You do. Okay. You follow. And she goes to um, the stables building, which is refurbished as one of your, um, basically the hotel area where your sleeping rooms are. And she goes directly to her bedroom. Mm-hmm. Which room number does she have? What do you think which room number does she have? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's 13. I'm, okay. I, I'm not the, the mathematician here. <laughs> That's all right. But I will note that it's number 13 to speak with the mathematician later. Is there anything unusual about the room? Um, actually, she leaves the door Mm -hmm. a little bit open, and as she goes in there, and uh, apparently, um, tidies it up a little bit, Mm -hmm. um, so you can you can get a peek in there. Um, it is less what it did look like and more what it does look like just before she closes the door. Okay. Uh, You know how your, um, wardrobe does look like with the very same dress several times all in neatly aligned, uh, on the bar there. Mm-hmm. It, it's just, it's just perfect. It's just there. There is her shoes are centered on uh, the right place on the floor. Her uh, luggage is stored away perfectly. She tidies up the t-shirts that she is putting into the um into the the uh, wardrobe and what's maybe even more confusing like she is visibly shaking while doing this and still extremely accurate Is there a logical reason why this should be happening? Can you imagine a logical reason why this is happening? 
No, <laughs> but I can't can, neither. I can I? Can, ooh, can I? Is the, is there a dice roll I can make to see if there's some sort of logical, reasonable? Because there's rules, okay, and this woman should be following. It looks like she should. She's normally a rule follower. I think the way that you see people and rules is like she is following a rule that you don't know <gasps> to the letter. Well, that's not fair. I have to know all the rules. How do you get to this rule? I don't know. I have to think about it. I'm going to study as much as I can. Soon, and the moment comes when she closes the door, there's nothing more to study. Rude. Can I reflect back on events that I've seen tonight? Yeah, you can. And try and make a connection that way. What, what is, do I roll dice or what? No, I don't think you have to roll dice. Just give us an idea how does it look like as you go back through your memory. It looks like she's been pushing herself too hard. It looks like nobody else is noticing this. And nobody else is making allowances for it. She's also not eating or drinking or... She's only going through the motions of what she has to be doing. So she's obviously connected to some, maybe she's connected to the missing partners, the missing executives. And you, the, the way my brain would do this mm -hmm. is by making like a uh, relationship map. Yes. And so maybe in Judy's headspace, a relationship map is unfolding. And we as the viewers can see mm -hmm. people moving there and you can. You're very trained in your job. You're oh, yeah. good at looking at people and memorizing behaviors and so you you can more or less zoom in on certain constellations mm -hmm. and see them moving around and then um your mental um space focuses more and more on sophie as you realize there is a moment that she isn't in the room. And the managers are also not in the room. They haven't been there for most of the time, so that's actually not really a coincidence. It's just something that springs out to you. Mm -hmm. And now going back, thinking really hard about the moment that you saw her first today. Maybe it was on the airport. Maybe it was on the bus. Maybe it was just the moment before she entered the Great Hall. She was in line. She wasn't breaking any rules. She was okay. And she wasn't following this strange rule that you can't figure out right now. Yeah. 
and you feel you feel something in the back of your mind just making click and we switch back to um to the uh, tunnels you come to a crossroad or a uh, y section um there's several path path leading away from the main road you're following more or less both of you are drawn into a different direction what is drawing you into this direction um I think I would go to the left side because everyone I know is always like the rule for following a maze, like getting out of a maze, for example, is always touch the right wall and you'll end up there. No, no, I don't like y'all. I'm different. <laughs> I'm different. Um, <laughs> so just in my ever... Um, in my behavior of always not following other people, I would probably go to the left side. Mm -hmm. What's drawing Nancy to another direction? I think maybe uh, Nancy smells something familiar, uh, but can't quite place it. And it's an odor that uh, creates a sense of deja vu but she just doesn't know from where um do you separate uh as soon as i see that uh they're heading the other direction i'm gonna say hey i, I think it's i think there's something down this way huh i think there's something over here i can smell something it, smell yeah it's you don't smell that it's it's like i clearly remember smelling this before but i can't put my finger on where no come on i don't uh, um and, and then ellie please repeat exactly what you just said i don't think i do smell it was that Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Do I smell it now or is it just like I don't? I'm a bit confused. Mm. You. Yeah. Yeah, you do smell it as well. Is it a good smell? Is it a bad smell? Do I remember the smell as well? Um, it is somewhere um, between summer day and strawberry cream lollipops. Oh, all the memories ruined by childhood. Beautiful. <laughs> mm. I, do, I do kind of smell it now, huh? Um. Yeah, I, I wish I could place it, but come on, let's let's keep going. It's got to be close, right? Sure, I, I guess, and I get like this little tiny LED light from my kids because it's probably dark or something, and I'm scared. I'm panicky as always, and I'm thinking of either just splitting up with me and I'm alone, and that's not a good thing in catacomb-like structures. But I'm also not feeling very good about that side. It's got to be close. 
right, says Nancy. And Ellie lights up the flashlight. It's got to be close, right, says Nancy. And Ellie lights up the flashlight. You enter the tunnel. It's got to be close. Are you hearing that? No. Or am I the, or am I the only one hearing echoes? Nancy's uh, saying it. Oh. I'd rather be stuck here with another person in the wrong direction than be alone in the right direction and have another person stuck in the wrong direction. Am I aware, cons. Am I aware of the feeling of looping almost? Um, Ali just turned on the flashlight twice in a row. Okay, that's weird. Yeah, no, let's stick together. Let's let's stick together. That's that's it. That's it. I mm, or go back. That's also a good idea. Just um, and then I'm gonna say it again, but this time I'm gonna put my hand over. Ellie's hand, like, don't turn on the flashlight. And I'm going to light my lighter. It's got to be close, right? Ellie, do you turn on the flashlight? I don't want to. <laughs> okay, she doesn't. You turn on the lighter. Yep. Open my zippo and flick it, hold it up, see if it illuminates anything up ahead. There's there's the tunnel. There's darkness in front of you. There's darkness behind you. And even though you haven't taken many steps, uh, you can't really see the mouth of the tunnel. You can't see the section anymore, really. And it do just mm, it doesn't feel right that Ellie didn't turn on the light. It's just a mm, it's like footmates crawling up backwards. Okay. Um Okay, turn on the light real quick. I click on the LED. And it goes on, but it's ah uh, the, the moment is ruined. Doesn't work anymore just this uneasy feeling now do we still smell the smell yes um, what color are the walls in here um brownish gray although you see some patterns of moss not too far away okay they're uh light enough that black lipstick would show up on them mm, yeah Right, I'm going to take lipstick out of my pocket and uh, draw an arrow on the wall uh, and say, come on. And uh, still keeping my lighter out and lit um, for a light source in addition to the LED. I'm going to kind of tug Ellie's arm as we continue down the hallway. And there is, there is more moss. And Lickin, and soon there are uh, glowing, faintly glowing, not comically glowing, but, but faintly glowing mushrooms. Mm. And you enter, you enter a cabin and now you realize the small stream of water, which was all the time running in front of you, and it merges with this pool of water in the middle of the cavern. Ah. 
I don't think this is the escape room. And if it is, we unwillingly entered it and we'll now have to find a way out. I don't know which of the two it is, and I don't like both answers. Don't worry, I've been marking our path and I put another arrow on the wall and uh how can I see to the bottom of this water? You come close. It's like a standing pool. Yeah, right. it's just uh, there's another tunnel. From there is also water running into this pool. And as you are about to, to come close to the um, to the rim of the pool, you see a shadow in this other tunnel. And they, they're holding some kind of uh, pencil or stuff like this and they, they are drawing a sign on the tunnel wall it's there's not much light there's only only a s very tiny flame from from a light or a zipper or something like this and it's just drawing more shadows onto this person than it puts light onto their face so you can't really uh recognize them I'm going to stare at that for a minute and then I'm going to slowly pull my hand away from the wall and watch what Obviously, they do. They, they have finished with throwing a very short sign onto the wall they, they put down their hand. Uh, I'm going to then take that same hand and raise it straight up above my head. What does Ellie do? Observe, try to be as still as possible, and try to not go into a full-blown panic attack of something is not right and I don't like it and my little toe is itching and telling me I have to go back to what I know, which is upstairs with normal people in my little room. How much force do you put into suppressing the instinct to flee? Um, it is my thing, sadly enough. So I'm probably, while trying to suppress that, not very aware of my surroundings as much as I would like to be. You move backwards and carelessly kick a stone with your heel. It starts flying onto one wall of the tunnel, reflecting to the next wall of the tunnel, ricocheting down into the cavern you're in, falling into the body of water, immediately drawing beautiful circles and ripples on the surface reflecting the light from the two lighters and the smell of summer days and strawberry cream lollipops intensifies as the other silhouette raises her arm over her head Scream, like full on Janet Lee in the shower screech. <laughs> and we cut back to the chapel. Mm -hmm. Professor Dr. Ludo Carpelli sits down, rests his back to the wall next to the door and watches you intently. What do you do, Brian? I continue as I always do. People observing my work does not change my work. Oh, sorry, I have to uh, shrug off the previous seat. Jeez. My spine is tingling. Uh, but um, I 
a bit like Da Vinci Code, trying to solve the puzzle, because I think there is more to this than I can at this moment see. And I try also to see if there are things, certain items placed in exactly some spaces, certain alcoves that should not be, like mistakes in certain things that might be a hint to something. Almost it's like I'm already puzzling myself. It is exactly as it should be. As soon as you found the first step in the number of the candles mm -hmm. and the light illuminating everything in a gentle glow, it is just like this place and your mind are an identical, perfect fit. It is like your imagination just neatly glides into the right place as you're always finding the next hint, the next step, the next easy thing, the next easy proof for an assumption or a theory, and it just works. It is brilliant. It is beautiful. It is just magnificent. It is divine. And suddenly, you are alone in a very special way of being alone. You're not lonely because you aren't hindered or limited or reduced by anything, by any outside perspective. You shed all of this. It's so easy here. Instead, you are connected to something bigger, something brighter, something more beautiful. And the chapel becomes a cathedral. What is the emotion right now dominating your heart? Awe. Uh, just pure awe. Uh, as I whispered, cum Deus calculates, es cognationem exeret fit manus. When God calculates and thinks things true, the world is made. It feels like I ascended to something and I should feel fear but I will just feel power and the need to go deeper faster and get all of it as soon as possible thank you Judy with a click in the back of your mind the gate opens. There's the ring of a giant bronze bell. Daunting. Telling those who overstep the lines, who don't follow the rules, who don't go with inquisitive interrogation into their own soul, that there will be punishment. The gate opens, and you are standing at the precipice. How do you cross the threshold. Correctly, boldly, with my head held high and full of purpose. You're still, you're still surrounded by the relationship 
network. You are still surrounded by the catalogs of rules and policies. Which ones stick out to you? Which relationships or rules? Yes. Oh. There's the doctor. Yes, that's important. And, oh, Ellie. She's important, too. Yes. Nancy's important. I'm not sure why. She's there. She is there. And for some reason, you feel that she is maybe someone you have to look the closest at. Mm. You step across the border. The, the image at this very moment is still too much. But there's, there's someone Someone who, who is clad in obsidian skin, adorned with wings and a beautiful crown of black dark horns on their forehead, mm -hmm. not wearing any cloth, but also not in the need of any. And they throw the judging sight onto you with the eyes of Sadie. <gasps> it is, it is a call of challenge. How do you respond? Well, do I have a choice, really? I, I, I have to go to her. She is my superior, and I am bound by the law and the rule. You feel... You feel the shackles on your hands and on your feet as they are already growing heavier and heavier the closer you get towards this creature. What is the emotion dominating your heart right now? Dominating my heart? Uncertainty, though I would never let anyone know. Why? Because at my core, I am always uncertain and the rules give me safety and security why shall no one see your insecurity because if they saw the insecurity they would doubt me and my conviction so is it fear Perhaps. I think fear is a good word for it. You feel this feeling growing. But in this very moment, there's so much more. You have the feeling that it doesn't have to be fear 
any longer. Thank you. A scream echoes through a cavern, reverberating from the surface of the pond. And from there, tiny droplets start rising from the peaks of the waterline, floating into the air. The two lights from the lighters are cut off from the lighters and start twirling and swirling around the room. Everything, everything starts turning around, up, down, left, and right. There's the scream. And then it is there again. People are drawing signs on walls. People are uh, raising their hands. People are stepping backwards and stones are starting to flow through the air. And overall, there's the smell of a summer day in strawberry cream lollipops and the sound of laughter. Joyful laughter. What do you do? How do you try to discern it? Uh, I, I think I'll just, um, sorry, I, I was not muted on the call, but I was totally muted going out to the audience. Apologize. Um, I'm, I guess, I, I mean, I'm just going to listen, see if I can, I'm assuming all these things are starting to echo to the point that it's making it very difficult to pick out a specific element, but I'm just going to try to just listen real hard and hope I can identify the laughter like where's the laughter coming from the laughter is coming from all of the, of the room okay maybe and... the pond but as you're concentrating on it it is the same voice but it's it's young and old in several stages in between it can't tell woman or man or anything in between or outside but it's always the same voice in different ages and it's just laughing it is laughing yes joyful happy i mean if the water seems to be the most consistent like source or it seems to be everything seems to be sort of centered around this water i'd like to get a closer look at the water i guess to get close to the water what's ellie doing um ellie is trying to not run away very very hard in fact so hard that in trying to not run away she's slowly stepping forward as to make the distance she, she would have to run away more and to make it less likely to run away but did not realizing it that they're going forward and yet there's something inside of you telling this is right this is okay this is good this is right. This is okay. This is good. This is right. Trust me. It is really okay. It is good for you. 
that's exactly the thing someone would say if they would want me to do something that is not right for me but okay that's perfectly fine and then they what's the worst that could happen right um i don't know what the worst that could happen is and that's maybe the bad point anyway i keep slowly scuffling forward both of you reach the water What position do you take? Are you hunkering down? Kneeling? Standing? I'm probably going to crouch next to the water. Is, is like, uh, Can we walk right up to like, is there like a a lip or a, or a drop off or can we walk right up to the edge of the water? You can walk directly to the edge of the water. Yeah, I'll probably uh, crouch next to it and maybe put my hand in it, wave it around a bit, see if see what happens if I create disturbances on the surface. And then? And probably at the same time, I'm going to have scuffled forward so much that I accidentally dip the tip of my boot in the water without even realizing, and then put it down. And the resistance is different because of the water, so pull it back up. Both of you create new ripples on the water. By this point, you are surrounded by floating droplets. And then you see only in the ripples a beautiful, beautiful tower made from marble, ivory, and glass. It is by far the most amazing sight you have ever seen. Nothing in your life ever seemed so real, so true to you. Nancy feels her memories rushing forwards, backwards, frantically searching for some point of reference, anything that just can compare to what this thing is, to what it means. But there's nothing only faint hints and whispers, only watered down, deluded images and metaphors. Nothing, absolutely nothing, prepared you for this thing. Ellie, there is nothing aside of this tower. It was always meant to be. And actually, you feel something in your heart as if, as, as if it, you already had in your hands. You upholded it. It was once yours, but you, you don't know why, but something took it away from you. And now it's back. And that's the only thing that truly matters. Neither if you realize the moment that you go through the mirror as you enter, but you feel one emotion that dominates your heart was it what is it i think it's blissful relief right like all of this tension is built up and now we're stepping into this new sort of 
environment, this bizarre, spectacular place, uh, and we make it, I think it's just joyful relief. I think Ellie, with the finally getting back what they lost, feels some kind of self-justified version of spite that can create energy. As if the, the emotional personification of I told you so, I told you I was right. Thank you. And this concludes today's episode. And I thank you, my players, so very much for joining me and our characters on their amazing journey to awakening. And I thank you, our amazing listeners and very kind uh, proprietor of uh, many hydrates for your assistance and also your company on our journey. Thank you. Um, we will go back and remember everybody who we are and where to find us. And uh, yeah, so please, Travis, tell us where to find you. Uh, my name is Travis, pronouns are he, they, when I'm not running games or playing in them, I'm writing them. You can find me anywhere online at Travis Leg. And if you are in Madison, Wisconsin this weekend and going to be at Gamehole Con, you can find me there. I'll be at the Onyx Path booth. So I uh, hope to see you there at the show. Thank you so much for running Game Time. It was, uh, as always, a delight. Thank you very much. Uh, Josie. Hi, my name is Josie. They, them. Um, uh, if I'm not live here, then um, I'm either... Um, just being a goblin or being a goblin on the internet. I'm currently working on um, an audio drama based on a book called Her Crown of Fire. Is it okay if I post a link in the chat? Just shoot it over to me on the, on the Zoom chat and I'll, I'll pop it in because I don't know if you've got the... Uh... I do have mod rights. So... Oh, then you should be good. Yes. Um... <laughs> These are the first 11 episodes, but the 12th one has been released and we are working after our hiatus on the later episodes. Uh, you can find me on any of the socials at Josie the 11th or just Josie. And uh, I had a really good time. And this is good panic. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> Ren. Uh, um. Jesus fuck, this was the most intense roleplay I ever fucking had, and I've been roleplaying for more than like 13 years. Um, yeah, sorry, my name is Ren. I played uh, Dr. Gilbert, the mathematician, uh, and not really able to be followed anywhere because I don't really do anything online except getting treated by amazing DMs like this, and Travis, of course, and others uh, from Onyx Path. I'm, I'm so glad I joined this. Is uh, tomorrow in two weeks? Because I need to know how this ends <laughs> as fast as possible. We will reconvene in two weeks, yes. Thank you a lot. Thank wow. you so much. Uh, Ipsy. Hi, I am Ipsy, and I am an unfortunate sufferer of I'm Too Beautiful Disease. I cannot be found right now because I am currently in recovery from I'm Too Beautiful Disease, <laughs> sponsored by Helix Incorporated. And you know what I'm going to say? You know, I'm going to say we're going to, uh, and it's also sponsored by the world below available on Backerkit. 
So uh, if you go to Backerkit, you can get into the world below uh, and uh, get a sneak preview and uh, enjoy what we have here to to offer you at Onyx Path. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. And some uh, some half a ween deals on Indie Friends Revolution. <laughs> 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 There you go. Uh, and all the other promotions that we have. Yeah, the Tome of Pentacle for Rage the Awakening. <laughs> the link below. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Which replaced my face. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, this is a side effect of I'm Too Beautiful Diseases. You should <laughs> shout out random promos for uh, products in the middle of conversations. So uh, if you need random promos for your products in the middle of conversations, you can hire me to do that whenever you find me after I have recovered from I'm too beautiful to <laughs> but most places you can find me as at Ipsy yeah so thank you everyone for tuning in thank you for being here I am Tomer uh, I will be uh, on IllusionCon beginning December uh, at the beginning of December and um, I will be run running games uh, of my own and uh, I will be running games by Onyx Path so uh, our our ways might cross over there uh, and right now I'm working on something that is called Remember Me and might be connected to my uh, self-organized uh, <laughs> Big project, modern person. So uh, that's the first time I, I dropped that title. So, okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hope you had a great evening and uh, hope to see you again in two weeks. All the best to you and uh, stay safe. You don't know what's beyond the next corner. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Uh, Bye. Bye.